Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be answering the question, what is a comma? Before I go any further, this is probably one of the most considered questions and the most misunderstood. It's not simply the definition of a comma, but it's fair to say the various rules that apply to a comma are complex. So complex that videos 11.1 all the way through to 13.6 will all be considering the function of the comma. That considered, let's crack on. A comma is a punctuation mark that separates words, clauses or ideas within a sentence. As you can see here, that is a comma. When we zoom in on it, it looks something like this. In this video, I'll be sharing one specific grammar rule around the comma, not to overwhelm you. It's the rule of commas with subjects and verbs. It's a simple rule as well. A comma should not separate a subject from its verb. Let's look at an incorrect example first. My neighbour, Diana, is an incredible artist. In this sentence, the subject is Diana and the verb is the present tense of the irregular verb to be, is. As you can see, the comma is separating the subject from the verb. That is far from ideal. The sentence should instead read something like this. My neighbour Diana is an incredible artist. We should never be separating with a comma a subject from its verb. That is the rule. Now let's consider it a little further with some examples. For each of the examples that we'll now be looking at, decide if they need a comma or if they're already using it properly. Hit pause if you need thinking time. So. What did you find? Their sister, comma, was left alone. The subject is their sister. And the verb, was left, is separated because of the comma. So we know this is incorrect. We must never separate the subject from the verb. Their sister was left alone. It should have no comma separating it. It is one sentence. This next example is slightly more complex. Eating with phones, tablets and laptop screens is a depressing business. Now in this example, the use of the comma is because we have a list of items that it's depressing to eat with. And in part, we are not separating the subject from the verb because the subject is the idea that eating with these items is depressing. And because there is a list, it is important that the first item of that list is separated by a comma. So actually, this is correct. The third example we have is Shazab forgot his homework. It's correct. We wouldn't need a comma to separate Shazab, who's the subject of the sentence, and the verb, the fact he forgot. There's no comma needed at all. Finally, the waiter, comma, handed us the bill. This is incorrect. We should never separate our subject, which in this case is the waiter. And the fact he handed us the bill is the verb, handed is the verb. We therefore need to remove the comma. Now it's your turn. For each of these examples, I want you to identify if the comma is being used correctly or whether the sentence itself needs a comma at all. In one instance, number five, it doesn't have a comma. I want you to confirm whether that is correct or incorrect for this example. Hit pause if you need thinking time. 
The takeaway contained pizza, chicken and chips. I hope the chicken and the chips weren't on the pizza, but forget that for now. This is correct. Because we are sharing the subject of the sentence is the takeaway and the fact it contained and then we're listing those items off. The reason we have a comma between pizza and chicken is because we are listing and that will come up in video 11.2 as to why we do that in that position. He cooked the chicken. In this case, we know this is splitting the subject and the verb from the object. Therefore, we know it's incorrect, actually. He cooked the chicken should remove the comma. It's one sentence. It's one statement. It doesn't need to be broken up. We spoke, comma, to the speaker after the talk. This is also splitting the subject and verb from the object. But more precisely, if we were the subject, the object is the speaker. It's incorrect. It should instead read, we spoke to the speaker after the talk, with no comma at all. They battled through snow, rain and sleet to see us. They must be very good friends and family to do that. We know who they are, they are our subject, and the verb battled is beside it. We then just find out the conditions with which these people battled. It's through the rain, the snow and the sleet. And the comma between snow and rain is significant. It's listing. Finally, my brother acts like a clown. There is no need for a comma in this sentence. I don't need to break this up into a different clause because it's all one piece of information. It is therefore correct. The business of commas may be complex, but hopefully through this series of videos, it will be broken down for you to follow. Just remember, never split a subject from its verb. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?